Welcome back. In this lesson, we will switch from regression to classification models. This lesson focuses on reviewing classification models. Our models built for when the response variable is categorical. Predicting a newborn's hair color, the winner of a basketball game, or the genre of the next song to come on the radio station are all examples of categorical responses, and we can build a classification model for each of them. When looking at classification models during this course, we will primarily use the tic-tac-toe in-game dataset. This dataset contains the complete set of possible configurations at the end of a game of tic-tac-toe. Each of the first nine columns represents one of the nine squares of a tic-tac-toe board. A B means the square is blank. An X represents player one, and an O is for player two. The final column indicates if the first player won, labeled positive, or not, labeled negative. The tic-tac-toe dataset is ideal for model validation because we have the complete set of outcomes. We can include as much or as little of this data in our models as we want. This allows us to really test how well the model is performing on unseen data. And if you just got an urge to play tic-tac-toe, Google will play against you as long as you would like. Several methods are shared across all scikit-learn models, but some are unique to the specific type of model. Before, we used the dot predict method to predict the value of new observations. Scikit-learn's classifier, random forest classifier, also has the method dot predict. This time, the new class of the observations is returned. We can also view how many observations were assigned to each class by turning the array of predictions into a pandas series and then using the method dot value counts. Another prediction method is dot predict proba, which returns an array of predicted probabilities for each class. Sometimes in model validation, we want to know the probability values and not just the classification. Each entry of the array contains probabilities that sum to 1. For example, the second entry has values of 0.1 and 0.9. This indicates that for this data point, player 1 has a 10% chance of losing given the current game board and a 90% chance of winning. Finally, we introduce two additional parameters. The first method, .getParams, is used to review which parameters went into a scikit-learn model. It will print out a dictionary of parameters and their values, allowing us to see exactly which parameters were used. Knowing these parameters is essential when assessing model quality, rerunning models, and even parameter tuning. The final method we will introduce is dot score. It is a quick way to look at the overall accuracy of the classification model. Accuracy measures will be discussed more in chapter two, but basically, this method provides values from zero to one on the percent of observations that were correctly labeled. In this example, almost 90% of games were correctly predicted by our model. Now that we have had an introduction to random forest classification models, let's work through a couple of exercises.